Hey guys, so with everything that's been happening the past week in regards to the tax cut and the mortgage crisis, I thought it would be a great time to put up a video on property investment and particularly if you're in the buy to let market. So if you're a landlord who has his house given out to rent or if you're trying to enter the buy to let market, I think there's a few things, specifically five things that you should keep in mind. So the first thing is the yield. Now, the yield is quite simply the returns you get from your investment. So if you have a buy to let property, your rental income that you're going to get as rent is technically your yield. Now, the yield will depend on a few things, primarily the age of the property, the tenants that have occupied the property or previously occupied the property, the actual size of the property, how big the property is, uh, the size, and then you've got the obvious one, the location uh, of the property. Now, obviously, if you're on a prime location, generally, you tend to have higher yields. Uh, but yeah, going into that a little later. Now, there's one thing I want you to keep in mind regarding size. And this is a general rule of thumb. Usually, the larger the size of the property, the smaller your yield will be, right? Again, exceptions do exist. But as a general rule of thumb, the larger your property, the smaller the yield uh, you'll get back. And this is primarily due to the fact that you have to keep up with upkeep costs, maintenance costs. Uh, you'll have a higher council tax. Uh, and so on and so forth. So there's a big chunk of your money, your yield that will be eaten out for these purposes. So uh, another thing to keep in mind is when you get your rent coming out, a portion of it will be given out for expenses. A good example is your mortgage. So a lot of people buy property on mortgage and give it out for rent. Uh, a portion of that will be deducted uh, from your rent every month you get. You have to deduct a certain amount of money for expenses such as your mortgages. Now talking about expenses, uh, let's have a quick breakdown of costs. now. This isn't all inclusive, but this is kind of like an umbrella or, or a blanket uh, statement of all the kind of costs that you will have if you have a property. So uh, the first one that you will have is quite simply an agent's fees. Now, if you go through an agent in the UK, the usual rate they charge is 10 to 15%. So you have to factor that in when you get your rent. Uh, the second thing is you'll have to pay for any value added tax. So your VAT. Uh, VAT. Uh, the third thing uh, that's going to go out as an expense is your insurance. Now, uh, generally speaking, if you're actually letting out a property, you need to have insurance on that property. Uh, and depending on, as I mentioned, the tenants and the location of the size, you'll have uh, varying amounts of insurance. So that, that, that would take up a huge chunk. So you've got insurance and any maintenance costs. Now, usually the higher yield um, properties that you have is student lets. So when you give it out for university students, you tend to have a better yield. But these are the people with the highest maintenance costs as well. And then finally, you've got void. So you have to always keep in mind, there's going to be a few months when you don't have occupancy in your uh, in your property or you don't have tenants. And those dry spells uh, are void and you have to still factor that in to your overall costs. Uh, second thing is, your gross yield and your net yield tends to have a difference. Quite simply put, a gross yield is just the rent money you get uh, in your hand in a month or in your account in a month. Now, your net yield is what remains after you've paid the expenses. So once you've paid for the agents, the VAT, the insurance, the maintenance, the void, what you get back is the net yield. And there tends to be a difference of 40%. So uh, once you get your rent in hand, there's a 40% decrease and that the remaining figure tends to be, the remaining 60% tends to be your absolute profit. Uh, the third thing to keep in mind is tenure. Now, uh, usually people give it a, uh, give out their loans as assured, uh, short leases. What that means is, uh, the contracts usually last for six months to a year, post which the landlord uh, kind of, uh, they have the discretion of whether to cancel or renew that contract or to decline it. Uh, it's usually not recommended for you to have uh, a property for a longer period because it depresses the value of the property. Uh, so it's always better to have a short, short hold leases. So you've got a short period where you've got the tenants given a six month contract or a 12 month contract. And depending on how it is, how the market is, how the tenants are, you can sort of reconsider in six or 12 months. Uh, the last thing is the uh, capital returns. Now, I'm not going to go into capital returns just yet. Uh, but a, a good thing to keep in mind is uh, the property value, or the capital returns you got from a property and particularly real estate investments uh, were at its highest in the 1990s, but then they've seen a huge drop, uh, especially during the 08 crisis. Uh, there was a huge drop. And even though it's picked up, uh, the capital returns have been quite marginal uh, as opposed to the, say, the explosive growth that was there in the 90s. So just a quick breakdown of what you need to know if you want to go into the buy-to-let business.